When you first discover the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, you find a half-broken robot wandering around called Professor Goodfeels. This robot has some rather uncharacteristic things to say. Far out, far out. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Groovy. Sounds like he's taken a life lesson from the dude. Well, what's with this guy? What makes him tick? We'll learn more by checking out the nearby Sunshine Tidings terminal. After getting through a novice lock, you can read a log written by a man named Jack. Turns out that Jack and his associate Alan were pre-war radicals who believed that all robots were sentient beings. They managed to break into a robot store, capture a robot, and bring it back here to the Sunshine Tidings Co-op. They referred to this theft as springing a slave. I guess they think that all robots are slaves. However, when they got the robot back to the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, the robot kept trying to go back to the store and tried to alert the authorities. So a third associate named Johnny hacked him a bit and created the personality we all know know and love Professor Goodfeels. He just wanders around the co-op, digging the world as it be, owing nothing to nobody. The next option on this terminal is to choose protocols for this robot. The first one is Just Be. That's the one he has right now. The second one is Guard Protocols. If you choose this, Professor Goodfeels wanders around the co-op saying exterminate in his hippie stoner voice. Exterminate. Exterminate. May I help you? If you get attacked, he'll defend you. But he's not a beefy robot. He has a small amount of life, so it's best to not put him into harm's way. Now, there is an option to shut him down. And if you choose this option, he collapses to the floor. He's perfectly fine, and for some reason, he continues to talk. After I shut him down, he kept on saying exterminate. Exterminate. Now the problem with Professor Goodfeels, and one of the biggest bummers about this cool robot, is unless you shut him down or send him home, if you leave the settlement and come back, he's gone. We don't know where he goes, he just disappears from the world. Which is a bit of a bummer, I'm sure that's probably bummed out quite a few people who liked Professor Goodfeels and wanted to keep him around. Now there are mods out there that can change this, I use them in my own game. But the last option on this terminal is to send Professor Professor Goodfeels home. If you do, your map is updated with the location of Hester's Consumer Robotics, and Professor Goodfeels beelines away from you at a sprinter's pace. Make sure you've got some jet fuel handy, because you have quite a jog in store for yourself if you intend to follow Professor Goodfeels. Also note that he does attract the attention of enemies. He will fight to defend you if you get attacked, but he's not as beefy as you are, so he's likely to be destroyed. I was lucky enough to follow him all the way to Hester's Consumer Robotics without him dying, but he got attacked many times and there were a few close calls. I had to make sure to kill the enemies as quickly as possible to mitigate the amount of damage that he received. Professor Goodfeels takes you on quite a journey. He takes you south past the Drumlin Diner. He continues on past Grey Garden. He heads east towards Lexington, and he walks right through a random encounter hotspot. Here, I almost lost him, but I found him going south across the bridge. I caught up to him on the other side, and he zipped right past Diamond City. He then went right through downtown Milton. Thankfully, in my game, I had recently cleared all of the buildings in this area of super mutants, so there was no one here to attack him. But normally, each of these buildings is filled with dozens of super mutants and super mutant suiciders, so <laughs> if Professor Goodfeels typically chooses this path in most games, this is where he'll die. He then goes through a military checkpoint.
past Big John Salvage to the left, and then at last he arrives at the back door of Hester's Consumer Robotics, but not before attracting the attention of nearby gunners. Finally, when he's safe and sound, he'll enter the building through the back door. Now, Hester's Consumer Robotics is an interesting place in and of itself. Outside, there's a Mr. Handy walking about. Good day to you! And if you go around to the front door, you can find a friendly Protectron walking around. Protect and serve. Hester's Consumer Robotics is in direct competition to Watts Consumer Electronics. In fact, the advertising bot for Watts Consumer Electronics even mentions Hester's Consumer Robotics when you meet him. If you go in through the front door, you find yourself in a sales floor. I'll have to mention this place in my next report. It's a perfect location for a scavenger team. Here, Hester's has all of its robots out on display. There's a stash of caps in the crib to the right, and then on the opposite wall, we find a symbol clacking monkey. Thankfully, he doesn't really do anything, so we can safely ignore him or kill him. In the back, we find a door that leads to what looks like an employee area. Disturbingly, there's an entire human skeleton in pieces on the table. We also find what looks to be dried blood and a torch. Could this person have been tortured with a blowtorch before bleeding to death on this table? And is this a post-war or pre-war murder? The bones are bleached white, dry, and brittle. This very well could have been a pre-war or murder. What did the guys at Hester's get up to? Heading through the small door to the southwest, we enter the manager's office. My favorite touch here is the steam and smoke coming out of the ventilation. There's really nothing of note in here. No hollow tapes, no safes. The door leads us back out to the sales floor. There's a surprisingly large amount of pre-war cash standing in stacks behind the counter. Maybe there was some sort of illegal activity going on here. Now, each of these robots on display has a tell me more button. I did the middle one first and after he finished, Hester's takes the hassle out of robot shopping. He kind of just collapsed to the ground. So I went on to the next one. In the house or in the yard, your family will love a robot from Hester's. And this one attacked me. I'm going to enjoy taking you apart. That behavior didn't make sense. I went to each of them. They each had different stories and they attacked me. Robot from Hester's means quality, safety, and reliability. Let's do this. You can trust the Hester's guarantee of safety. Once you've finished exploring the sales floor, you can head down a hallway to find a bathroom to the right. And shockingly, here we find the fresh corpse of a settler. There's absolutely no indication as to how she died. We don't find any raider paraphernalia. There's no gun in her hand, no splatter on the wall. How did she die? Could one of the robots have killed her? Opening the big double doors at the end of the hallway, we enter a garage. This is likely where they kept robots that they were repairing. However, as soon as we we enter, we get attacked. An Assaultron, a Fire Protectron, and a Construction Protectron attack. There is a Sentry Bot, but the Sentry Bot for some reason didn't attack me. And here we find our good friend, Professor Goodfeels. Whoa, man. He's far out. As chill as ever, just enjoying life. And I suppose here he sits for the remainder of the game. There's a stash of caps in one of the blasted out terminals by the power armor repair station. And in the southeast corner, we find a locked gate. Unlocking this brings us to a garbage area. Next to the dumpster are three large metal containers. One, which has a skeleton inside, and the other has its skull. More evidence of some sort of pre-war nefarious deed going on here. I mean, it is normal to find skeletons in pre-war facilities, but not in strange places. We find them in beds and on chairs, but stuffed in barrels? Not so much. Here is where we find the red steamer trunk reward, and if you have a jetpack, you can hop up on top of the structure. 
following the heating vent across to the next room, you can turn left and behind a stack of crates is another fresh female corpse. This one is a traitor. There's a stash of caps on the crate next to her, but again, no indication as to how she died. Also on top of this building is a ladder that leads to the roof. On the roof by a sleeping bag and a cooler is a third fresh female corpse. So how can we explain all of these corpses? Well, we are right in the middle of downtown Boston and we're close to where gunners have been hanging out. Maybe these settlers sought refuge on the roof of this building. They've got their sleeping bag out here and a bunch of food. They were setting up camp, maybe getting ready for a meal when gunners spotted them and descended upon them. They killed one, but the other two ran for the hatch to Hester's consumer robotics. The gunners knew better than to follow them inside. Inside, they aroused the attention of the robots. One fled downstairs and hid in the bathroom, where she was ultimately found and killed by a robot, and the other hid behind the crates, where she also was killed by a robot. Admittedly, that is pure speculation, but it's the best that I can do. Now, from the roof, if you want, you can explore further by going up the crashed light rail car that is lying on the roof of Hester's robotics. At the very end, you come to a ledge, but if you have a jetpack, you can coast across the opening and down the second tube. From here, you find yourself at the Mass Bay Medical Center. I definitely need to do a video on this place later. But if you hop up on top of the parking garage and look west, you find a building with a fire escape. On the roof, there's a locked door, and inside the advanced locked door, you find a weapons workbench and a Syringer rifle. That's right, the very rare Syringer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Professor Goodfields and Hester's Consumer Robotics, a pre-war crime of theft that ended up giving us an interesting robot personality in the game good old Professor Goodfields. What are your thoughts on this topic, ladies and gentlemen? Do you like Professor Goodfields? Are you sad that he got removed from your game somehow? Or did you manage to send him home before he vanished from your world? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video every single day of the week, so be sure to subscribe to find out what I publish tomorrow. And if you'd like to chat about this topic on the Oxhorn Community Discord server, click on the invitation link in the description of this video. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.